Welcome to the tutorial for the Absolute White RIP software. If you already produce two-step transfers as a hobby on your existing printer, you can understand just how challenging it is to prepare your artwork for production. Well, with the Absolute White system, you're not only getting the benefit of the white toner technology behind Absolute White, but you're also getting access to a professional RIP software. The whole purpose of RIP software is to make preparation of artwork as easy as the click of a button. And we're gonna demonstrate exactly how to use Absolute White RIP today. The first time you launch, it's going to pop up a window here asking you to validate your software. Now, you can run it in demo mode, but that's gonna print a watermark out and pretty much make all of your prints useless. So you wanna click Validate Software. What's going to pop up is a software activation and validation window. Now, the serial number that you enter here is not the serial number for your printer. It's actually going to be an absolute white specific serial number that should have been emailed over to you. What you're going to do is you're going to enter that serial number here. In order to get a validation code, you're going to have to click on the link to open the UniNet iColor validation site. It will ask you to paste your serial number and the system ID that's in the box in gray. And then once you submit that, it will output a validation code. You can then use that validation code to activate your copy of Absolute White RIP. At this point, Absolute White should pop up for the first time and you can follow along with the rest of the tutorial. Essentially, whenever you import artwork using Absolute White RIP, all you have to do is drop the artwork in and size it. The software is going to take care of the color profiles and the amount of white being laid down in all areas of your print. So it's not just going to be a solid block of white, it's actually going to vary the amount of white toner being laid down to best suit the production of two-step transfers, both from a vibrancy standpoint and to maximize the adhesion to your glue layer. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is click on this button right here. This is the import artwork button. And once we click that, even if you don't have a file prepared and ready to go, this program comes with a variety of sample files to practice with. One of my favorites is the Carnival iColor file because it has a variety of colors. It includes a significant amount of negative space. And by that, I mean all of these areas in black in between the individual shapes are areas where the t-shirt color is going to show through. That means this print has several areas where the fabric can give and flex if it's stretched. It also makes it a lot easier for your washing machine to rinse through here without potentially causing premature cracking or stress fractures from stretching it too far. So what'll happen is you'll end up with a very breathable, stretchable, durable, and pleasant feeling piece of artwork when it's turned into a transfer. Now, there's several features that we can tinker with here on the left hand and on the right hand side. We're gonna go through all of them here in this tutorial. The first thing we did was import a graphic and that's right here. Now, if the graphic you imported is already at the perfect size for production, you can click generate PDF and that's how you output your artwork. So if we were to click generate PDF right now, it's gonna pop up a menu and it shows us where it's gonna be outputting the artwork. And it also says overprint and underprint in terms of layer order. If we were to click underprint, the instances where you would use this would be black cardstock, for instance, where you're trying to print a layer of white down underneath your cyan, magenta, and yellow. So you can produce a full color image on a black background. Now, overprint is typically what you're going to use for two-step transfers. That's where the cyan, magenta, and yellow come into contact with your transfer sheet, and then we come back through and we lay down a layer of white on top of that. Now, the white layer shift, this is a feature that if you already know your printer has a tendency to shift in one direction or another, whether it's up, down, left, or right, you can compensate for that ahead of time by moving over the layer just slightly as an offset so that it overcomes that tendency to shift the print in one direction or another. Now, obviously with consumer grade printers where we're running two passes on the same machine, it can be very difficult to control this. So some of this does come down to randomness or the tolerances of your individual printer. Sometimes it does come down to a more repeatable pattern. And this gives you that extra control when you have a known offset. Now, if we were to generate a PDF right now with the overprint, it's going to pop out a PDF with two separate pages. You can see here that the PDF is created. One of those pages are going to be for the color layer and the next one is gonna be for the white layer. Okay, so I have the artwork pulled up right here. Let's go ahead and resize it so we can take a look here. The first page is a mirrored image of the carnival print. And that's important because whenever we're producing our two-step transfers, the artwork needs to be mirrored so that when we marry it to the B sheet that includes our adhesive layer and peel it away, we can then transfer the finished image onto the t-shirt so that it comes out correct and right reading. Right now, this is the back of the sheet. And then we'll run that same image through the machine a second time once we've swapped the cartridge out to include our white layer. Now take a look at this white 
white layer. Notice how it's not solid black. If I were to zoom in on this here, you can see that the white layer is actually printed in gradient. That's one of the unique features of a RIP software. It's able to vary the amount of white laid down on that second layer intuitively to make sure that we've got maximum adhesion and the proper amount of coverage for any given area. Now, if we were to look at the artwork here and take a look at these side by side, you can see that areas that have darker artwork, for instance, we've got the cyan and blue mask right here. They're going to include less along the darker parts of the image. There's less white here that correlates to this area here and a little bit more that correlates to the solid cyan portion of the image right there. This means that whenever we're producing our two-step transfers, we have less of a chance of the artwork becoming muddy because that can happen. If you have full coverage of your white toner and then you marry that up to an image that has a dark color, for instance, sometimes the color toner can get pushed down into the white and you end up with duller muted colors. This is specifically noticeable on things like bright red. And you can see here that the red is non-existent. There is no need when we have so much magenta and yellow being printed to have any white being printed. Because if you're using a one-step transfer, it will adhere to the shirt just fine. Or if you're using a two-step transfer, it has plenty of coverage to directly adhere to your B-sheet layer. So that is actually the quickest version of the tutorial. Import a graphic right here, turn it into a PDF, and then go ahead and run the sheet through in color first, swap that cartridge, and run it through with the white layer second. It's automatically going to be mirrored. It's going to handle the white. It's going to handle the color. You're ready to go. Now, if you need more control over your print, whether you need to resize it or make adjustments to it, that's where all of these functions over here come into play, and even these two functions right here, and we'll go over them last. So first of all, let's talk about image controls. I'm going to click on the image right here. So let's start with the top and move our way down. The first thing right here is define and select sizes. That's where we're going to choose the paper size that we're working with. Whenever I click on that, I can make adjustments here, whether I'm running an 8.5 by 11 letter sheet or I'm using A4, 8.26 by 11.7. This is an important setting. You want to make sure that you have the corresponding paper size selected whenever you're outputting your artwork. In this case, we'll stick with 8.5 by 11. Now, the functionality exists for you to be able to go up to 8.5 by 17 if your printer allows for it, or if you're using a larger printer, you can even go up to 11 by 17. These are the built-in sizes though. However, if you have a custom size paper or something different than this, you can add a new size, define its dimensions, give it a name, and click OK. For now, we're just going to leave it on letter and click OK. Then we're going to go ahead and go over here. If we select our artwork, we can go over here and we can expand it to fill the canvas. It's going to run a script to figure out how much extra space we have and then bring this out. Now, the other thing it's going to ask us is whether we want to remove the blank space from our graphic. If we do that, not only is it going to expand, but before it does that, it's going to trim away all of the blank pixels around the border of our graphic. Take a look at this. So I'm going to say, yes, remove blank space from graphic. It's going to trim it inward. And then the script is going to run and it's going to bring it all the way out to the edges of our canvas. Now, that being said, if you look down here at the bottom, you can see that the iColor print logo, the bottom of that red square, is almost to the edge of the 11 inch paper. That's not ideal because if we're working with a one or two step transfer, typically you want to have about a quarter of an inch in on all sides. So we can try one of two things. The first thing we can try is to center horizontally and vertically on the page. That way we're both centered this way and this way. Let's start right here. First, we're going to center it horizontally and you can see that it didn't make a difference because we're already centered. Next, we're going to center it vertically and you can see that it actually jumped up off the bottom of the page and it left us with just under a quarter inch. Now, assuming the printable area on your unit is edge to edge, this should be just fine. But on your machine, if you know that there's a quarter of an inch or half of an inch bleed, you can actually scale this design down. And you can do that manually by just grabbing the corner and you can see how it constrains the proportions. Whenever I grab the corners, you can see the numbers on the left and on the top. I can go ahead and make an adjustment here and say, I want a 10 and a half inch tall graphic. And as soon as I've done that, now I have a 10 and a half inch tall by eight inch wide graphic. And when I center that horizontally and vertically, I have exactly a quarter inch all the way around my print. Now you may have an image that is wider than it's tall or it's oriented vertically, but it needs to be laid out horizontally. If that's the case, that's where these buttons come in here. I can rotate my image 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise. And notice what happened whenever I click that clockwise rotation. When I turned it 90 degrees, it automatically shrunk my image down to fit inside the boundaries of the page. If I were to stretch it back out, first of all, I can remove blank space. We've already done that, so I'm not going to do it again. It's going to go ahead and enlarge it a little bit here. Now, in this case, eight and a quarter is going to be a little bit too much. We're going to bring that down to eight inches. And now we've still got our quarter inch on the left and the right hand side. And we can bring this up here. Once I brought it up to about a quarter inch off the top, then I can go ahead and center it horizontally. But I'm going to leave it where it's at. Now, what happens if you want to rotate your graphic, but you don't want to do it 90 degrees in any direction? Let's 
let's go ahead and click rotate arbitrary. And this allows us to rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise any number of degrees we want. Let's go ahead and move it 45 degrees clockwise. You can see it's gonna run the rotation and now we've rotated it 45 degrees clockwise. Okay, now that we've kind of explored these functions where we can center it horizontally and vertically, here's the one last thing we can do. Let's say you come up with a graphic that you want to be right reading or mirrored for one reason or another. You have the ability to flip it vertically and you have the ability to flip it horizontally. Now the RIP software will automatically mirror your image on output so you don't have to flip it horizontally here or vertically to get the image you want to show up in order to get a correct RIP. It's going to do that for you. Now, that being said, the software cannot detect if your graphic is already mirrored. So if you import a graphic that is mirrored by default and you bring it into absolute white, it may actually unmirror it. So as long as your graphic is right reading in the preview, the RIP software will automatically mirror it correctly for output. However, if you import a mirrored graphic, you may need to use those tabs to unmirror it so the software can do what it needs to do. All right, now that we've gone through all the functionality on the right-hand side, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these tabs on the left-hand side. To start with this white generation layer one, I wanna clear this artwork out and we're gonna start over. So we're gonna select the artwork and we're gonna click this recycling bin and that's gonna clear the canvas. So are you sure you wanna remove the graphic? Yes, we do. Let's come back in here and let's open a new image that has black in it. So we have this one here, but that's not the one I'm gonna use. Let's use the surf shark because the surf shark is wearing black sunglasses and there's a little bit of dark spots in the antiqued gold area here. So let's go ahead and crack that open. And it drops us in with an image that already has black in it. All right, now the next thing I wanna talk about is the white layer generation tab. That's this right here. One of the key features is the remove black option. So if we are trying to print an image that already has black in it, for instance, the back part of this fin here, some of these antiqued areas around the gold trim and his sunglasses are all black. If we were to print black on a two-step transfer and then put it onto a dark shirt, it's not going to look nearly as good or as convincing as it could if it was just knocked out because the black shirt is gonna be matte and we're gonna have that shinier texture that comes with the black toner that we're printing out. It's not necessary. So we can click the remove black and the default sensitivity of 84 is going to do a pretty good job of removing the majority of the areas we would consider leaning towards solid black without getting any of the transition areas caught up in it. If you were to drop it way down here into the 60s or 40s, you're going to see that a lot of the white is choked back and we're cutting out things that have no business being cut out. So let's go ahead and come back over here and just look at 84 and we'll see there's really no distortion. It's going to look pretty much like our original graphic did. Now I can't change the canvas color to show you that there is canvas color showing through but that's essentially what's happening here without it cutting out any of the areas that we don't want it to and that's a really handy feature because if you're printing a photograph or artwork where there's a solid area of graphic like there is here knocking that black out is going to give you that much more shirt exposure and it's going to feel a little better and it's going to look a little better the other aspects of this you have control over are gonna be something that you may be more familiar with. The white choke. This means it's gonna pull back about three pixels in on the white layer, anywhere where the white is going to overlay your color graphic. This right here is going to be probably your primary tool in making sure that your two-step transfers, once they've fed through the machine twice, are gonna turn out how you intended with very few rejects. If you notice that your printer has too much slop in it and it's constantly off by a 16th or 32nd of an inch, jumping this white choke layer up until that's not an issue is going to give you the best chance of producing a two-step transfer with minimal wastage. Now, by that same token, if you were to increase this white choke significantly and you're trying to print fine details like text or, or maybe those bubbles from the carnival graphic, the higher this choke, the further in the white is going to recede and that's gonna potentially cause problems down the line for you. So what I like to do is keep the choke as low as I possibly can get away with without causing wasted prints. Now for the most part, this setting right here, the white feathering that controls how the white underbase choke fades into the color layer, that can mostly be left alone. Because if you were to modify the intensity and the sharpness, some strange things start to happen where you end up with white bleeding into areas that really should be color, especially if we're knocking the black out. So we can leave that on default, and that's gonna behave pretty much how you want it to. Now on the white toner volume, you can adjust less or more toner. Certain brands of printers allow you to crank that toner all the way up to 400%, and it's gonna pump out a lot of white. Now for two-step t-shirt transfers, more toner is actually not better. More toner could lead to a more brittle, less stretchable print actually. So for the most part, the default of 220 total coverage is what you're looking for. 
that's going to let you create all of the blends of colors that you want while making sure that the softer colors have enough white behind them to stick to the B sheet without overpowering your colors. So if everything looks good, in this case, we're still knocking out the black, but we've got all the rest of these settings on default, we can click save and exit. Now that's going to create our white layer and we can preview that here You can see that we've cut in here. That's a great example of the knock me blackout. Okay, so the next setting I wanna explore with is this one right here, and that is the activate and configure rasterization. This is actually a, a feature that's included in the high-end version of ProRip. The reason it's gonna be so challenging to use with a multi-pass printer like you have is because all of the issues that could result from your white underbase slightly peeking out and leaving that white border around your image are gonna be multiplied when you start adding holes to the image. So let's turn on toner reduction and rasterization, and this is going to produce an even run of holes all throughout the graphic. It'll take a little while to load, but once it does, you can actually drag this square around and start seeing that there are holes now. And these are evenly placed holes. This is toner reduction, and we've added these little halftone holes throughout the image. That's gonna come in handy when you've got a solid block print, whether it's a memorial shirt where you're running a photograph or something like this, where there's a lot of space without a break in the graphic. You're gonna see that these holes here reduce the total amount of toner, and it's gonna give you a more breathable, stretchable design that's gonna wash well and feel better. Now, again, any of these little areas here where the white layer doesn't line up with the color layer are gonna be problematic. And they're not even gonna function as intended if you have half of it occluded with white that's offset. Now, you can fix that a little bit by either varying the size of the holes or more specifically increasing the amount of choke. But again, if you increase the choke too much, lighter parts of the design that are choked in aren't going to create an A to B transfer very easily because we're gonna end up with adhesion issues when there's not enough color toner to stick to our B sheet. So so this is gonna be a feature that you'll probably wanna experiment with, but use sparingly, especially the very whole size with transparency. This specific image is not a fantastic example, but let's say you had an image that was solid here and then the smoke wisps off into a transparent portion of the image. Very whole size with transparency is gonna create larger holes where it's more transparent, smaller holes where it's more opaque. So instead of these evenly sized and spaced holes, you'll end up with small or no holes in the opaque parts that will gradually grow to very large holes in the translucent areas. Again, this is something that's most effective with a dedicated white toner transfer printer where it's running the entire image in one step, but it is something that you can experiment with if you have transparency in your graphics and you want to try simulating that transparency roll off with this toner reduction feature. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just save it as is. It's going to re-rip it and now you can see that we have some halftone rasterization going on over here. The last setting I want to take a look at is this one down here. And in this menu here, you can see that we have the white toner volume. It's actually redundant. If I change this to, let's say 302 and save it here, and then I come up to this window over here, it actually has that same value, 302. So 220 is the default, we can leave it. It just happens to be in this menu, and it's also in this other menu over here. So the output resolution is something that you can adjust to match the maximum resolution of your printer. This isn't really necessary to tinker with because 600 by 600 is typically more than enough, even on the professional printers to produce very detailed graphics. Keep in mind that the industry standard is screen printing, and a lot of times we're dealing with an effective resolution of under 100 pixels per inch, or 100 by 100 output resolution, just because of the screens we're dealing with. So 600 by 600, plenty to do most graphic t-shirt work. Now output, you can select display PDF after processing. So when I click this, it'll automatically load it from my hard drive without me having to navigate there and open it. Now the next thing is the color layer generation settings. Some printers require that you have the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black cartridge in when you're running the black print through the machine. If that's the case, then you'll want to select this. Now, some printers allow you to keep the white cartridge in. This does not mean that it's a single pass printer like the iColor 560s or the 650s that can produce the print in one go without having to reload the paper and run it a second time. That is a dedicated printer setting. However, this does mean that the printer may be capable of creating darker areas of the image without the use of the black toner. So for instance, if your printer supports it, you can leave the white cartridge in and then darker areas of your print can be simulated with cyan, magenta, and yellow. So these areas here that start to lean into the dark gray would be done using a blend of cyan, magenta, and yellow. And then you'd be able to run it through the printer twice without swapping your cartridges. Either way, it still has to run through the printer twice, but you may or may not have to also swap your cartridges just depending on the model you have. 
Now, one of the other features here is the page counter. Right now, the number of times you can rip an image with the Absolute White Rip software corresponds roughly with the number of prints you would get out of a cartridge. Now, if you are printing one at a time with completely different images, it's possible you could bump into that limit before your cartridge expires. Now, on the other hand, if you rip a design and run 100 copies of it, you're far more likely to run out of your cartridge before your Absolute White Rip expires. When that happens, you can reload the balance in one of two ways. If you've exhausted your absolute white toner cartridge, you can purchase a new one and it will come with a serial number that you can use to increase the total number of pages that you can output with absolute white. The alternative is to permanently unlock absolute white rip and buy an unlimited page counter package. To do that, navigate over to the iColor Print website and click on the shop. Once there, you can filter by software. Scroll down and you'll see the various page amounts that you can purchase for your Absolute White Rip software. If you just want to reload enough to finish out your cartridge, you could pick up a 1500 or a 5000 page key, but you also have the option to fully unlock it. And if you unlock unlimited prints, that means you'll be able to output graphics to PDFs without ever worrying about your page counter running down before your toner cartridge does. So to activate this, all you have to do is click on the product, and once you purchase it, you'll receive an activation code that can then be inputted to the software here. Once activated, you'll have an unlimited copy of Absolute White Rip, and you'll never have to worry about page counters again. So let's go ahead and click Save and Exit. We didn't have to make any changes here. And that's pretty much it with this software. You can toggle between the print preview, the white layer, and the color layer. You can display the original graphic as it was imported in. You can see the transparency that's here, and you have all of these controls that make the process of ripping a graphic directly from Photoshop or Illustrator so much easier than having to manually prepare both the color layer and the white layer. Good luck and I'll see you in the next one.